Hey, Karen Julia here, and this is part two in our tutorial on how to make your show up website multilingual. So in this tutorial, we're going to be specifically looking at the WordPress blog part of your show it website. And we're going to be looking at how we're going to get all those href lang tags that we talked about in video number one onto your WordPress blog. And it's actually quite a bit easier than it was over at the show it side of things. So let's make me a little bit smaller, put my head in the corner, and I'm going to show you how it's done. First up, you're going to need to have the WPML plugin. There's a link to that underneath this video. And the good news is that you don't need the most expensive version of this. You just need the blog version. So there are various different levels um, uh, with this plugin. And they do like a, a lighter level that's designed just for the blog part only. Uh, so if you go to kind of where the purchase is, um, I think it's purchase process. It explains the different parts of um, the different option. Oh, there we go. So it's WPML's pricing. And you see here there's three different levels. So all you need is the multilingual blog. It's just this first one. Um, and this is an annual fee for this. And this plugin is going to create the href lang tags between all your blogs automatically. And it's going to create a space for you to be able to put the translations in as well. Uh, so it's really good. I'm going to show you exactly what settings you're going to need um, so that you can kind of get the best results from this. So this is the back end of our test site. And if we head down on the left hand side here, I've already installed this plugin. So we're just going to have a look at the, the settings here. So if we click on it, it opens up with this initial settings screen. And we have reporting turned on. It's not essential. Uh, the next section down is for site languages, and this website is going to be shown in English and Spanish. This next section with the URL format is really important. So you remember um, on the Show It website where we created the duplicate homepage using the language international ISO code? Well, it's really important that you select the correct thing here so that that structure matches. So it needs to be the first one that's ticked. And um, this uh, option will enable that structure to match what we set up in the show at site. So we'll have the, the URL and then forward slash ES dash US for uh, US Spanish. So that's a, a key thing to make sure you've got right. Um, there's some language switcher options here, and we can also set it to just skip the language if we've not done the translation yet. So I would recommend you select that. Everything else on this page, um, we also would need to set up the links to a translation of posts. And for that, I've just used the, the little kind of um, Spanish flag so that it's a nice little visual cue. Um, to set that up, you would just click on the pencil. And there's a few options to select here of whether you would want the language switcher to be above or below the post, whether you want to use the flag or not, whether you want to use the native language name or the name in English. The settings here don't really matter too much. However, I would highly recommend you choose above the post. One of the things I mentioned in the previous video is the href lang tags should be as high up in the page as possible. And if you opt for the below the post, post option, it means that the href lang is going to be much further down the page. So I'd recommend choosing the, the one that's selected there. We're just going to cancel there. Everything else on here, I don't think we really made a lot of um, changes to the core settings, to be honest. It's really, the, the main things are that the URL structure is correct and the href lang tags are as high up in the page as possible. That's your core things. Um, if we look through the rest of this, there's really not a lot to change because we're only using the blog version and we've already got um, our settings on the, the short version of the website. So there was no change in the kind of themes and plugins settings. Media translation, I would recommend that you do not translate the media. And the reason for that is usually the volume of photos on a photography site is really pretty sizable once you're 
kind of quite well established as a photographer. And if you translate the media, it's going to duplicate the media. Now, if you do decide that you would like to do this, then please check with show it first and see how much space you're using, how much space you've got left and work out whether that makes sense from a kind of practical point of view first before you go and increase it and then find out you've run out of room. Um, now, for non-photography websites, I would say, yes, definitely do this because it is going to help. However, when you've got a huge volume of photos, it can start causing kind of um, size limitation problems. So you just want to be careful before you do it that you don't cause any uh, issues with running out of space in your server. Um, it depends, I suppose, the mix of work that you're doing and um, targeting each country. You know, I think you've still got a chance of your photos being shown um, because even if they're not translated, the photos will be shown on the blog post with all the other um, language and locale information. So it's not like they wouldn't be um, shown in that way, you know. Um, moving on to the next setting, the menu sync. You're not going to do anything here because all the menus are controlled from um, from the show it settings. Taxonomy translation, we're not going to do anything with, so we can just disregard that. Um, the core settings down here, you want to select everything um, in this section apart from these two middle things. So feel free to just pause the video and copy the settings. And if we scroll down, um, we've got posts and pages set to um, translatable. And, uh, you know, you don't need your media to be translated. I think it's probably going to be in a case by case basis, though, um, depending on, you know, maybe the results that you're getting already. So if you can avoid duplicating your entire media, then that's probably a good idea. Um, so that's all that's in this setting. In, in terms of the overall settings. If we just click on posts and just have a look at how that actually looks in the background, when you switch the plugin on and get all those core settings set up, you'll see that you have a little plus um, at the side of the, the page titles here. And this is where you can add your translation in your additional language. You can see that we've done one here already. I've only translated one, one post already. And if we click on that and open it up, Um, we can then add the, the translation manually for the page that already exists. So you'll be able to just pop that information in there. We've not added the text content to this page yet, um, but your translated text can just be added into this section. And if we just go back, um, what it'll look like if you just want to add the translation in, you just click plus. And then you would be able to add the title and then put the title in in the target language. Um, so you're able to just manually um, type that in and manually add the text yourself. And there's a variety of different translation services that you can use online to help you if you want to. But um, I'm guessing if you're going to be targeting um, sites that you want to uh, or locations that you want to go and work in, then you're going to be familiar with those languages. Um, but if you wanted to do it a little bit faster, the online translation services can do kind of like bulk translations for you, which might be quicker. Um, and then you could just go through them and check them yourself and maybe do any fine tuning and with the changes. So what that looks like on the outside of the website, if we just head over to the blog here and go to our um, original post that we have our translation of, well, we don't have it yet, uh, you'll see the flag appears at the top here and we've got the option to click on this and then be shown the alternative page, which at the moment is just blank. Um, but then on the Spanish page, uh, we've got the option to then go back to English. And that's how that would look. So you see really the plugin makes things quite easy in the sense that you don't really have to touch any code. The key thing is just your URL structure and making sure the um, option, the switcher is high up in the page so that when we dig into the, the code to look at this, um, Google's able to find it relatively near the top of the page and it's not gonna to be too far down. Um, and that is gonna help um, getting your website ranking in a variety of different 
countries and languages that you are wanting to be found in. So any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. Um, I'd love to hear how you got on with this and I hope it's been useful for everyone and I'll speak to you soon.